Getting ready now, Rocky Stegman, about to partake in his trampoline extravaganza, sweating profusely, although some perform better moist. Hindenburg, the Dust Bowl, Hurricane Katrina. These are just a few of the greatest tragedies in US history. Among them, a day that will live in infamy, not just for sports fans, but for people everywhere. It was like a car crash. You couldn't look away. Even if you wanted to, you could. Even if you liked it, but it was very sad. The 1980s Men's Gymnastics World Championship was such a fucking disaster. I would have preferred a second potato farm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 1980s World Gymnastics Championship. I'm your host, Joe Radigan, and right now I'll take you down to Rocky Stegman, who's about to warm up for his first routine of the night. Extreme amount of pressure on Rocky, loose like a goose. And the approach. And oh my god, his head goes through the ceiling. This is, this is just hard to watch. Rocky Stegman nearly bounced to heaven. One would think that would be the day's final tragedy. One would be wrong. Folks, let's take a look behind the scenes at Kenny Leahy, a young, gentle gymnast out of Scottsdale, as he approaches his vault into the phone. Remember, folks, that this is just a practice round for Leahy. His real vault will be coming up soon. Here he goes. The dismount. And oh! Oh, it looks like Leahy has lost his balance in the air. He his legs are still kicking, but he just seems to be sinking further and further into the abyss of foam. Someone get him out of there! Ladies and gentlemen, it's been over an hour and they still cannot locate Kenny Lee. The, uh, the rescue team does not look optimistic. One second he was flipping, the next second he's gone. The paramedics are shaking their heads. Can't be a lot of air down there. Who knows what that guy's going through? Kenny Leahy, if, uh, if you're still alive out there, don't give up hope. And he was never seen again. As the 1980 gymnastics championship went on, it only got worse. The veteran Kyle Conroy begins warming up. Hey, Conroy, you suck! Ha <laughs> ha! And Steve Fontana up next. Oh, not the performance he was hoping for. We go to the judges. And the judges score nine, ten, nine. Well, clearly these judges have been paid off. That ass wipe. What, 9 10 9? Would you buy the discount scores? Buy three tens next time, maybe he'll beat me. Harold Ford will have to put on one hell of a performance to match that. Oh my, folks! In all my years of commentary, I have never seen a man gymnastics that well. And let's go to the judges' scores. Unbelievable! Harold Ford has taken the lead. Let's go. Let's go. This guy's a cheater. He's using a performance-enhancing substance. I am not. 
any man with eyes could see that he was on a near lethal amount of cocaine. Look at him, he's on meth! Joke's on you, it's not meth, it's crack. Yeah. Although it was never legally proven, that guy was on a lot of fucking cocaine. And let's go to that Fozzie Garden Jumbotron for an instant replay. I was rooting for Ari Ford because he looks like my uncle, but he had the crazy look in his eye like he was on the loose. Ooh. Is that? That's not me. That's, ooh, that's a bad look. That's, uh, that's a fake. That's a fake video. It wasn't. The amount of cocaine Harry Ford had in his system was more than enough to take down a moose in heat, let alone a mortal man. One more Tootski, and he might have gone belly up. But Harry Ford prevailed. Nines? You give me nines? I pay you for tens, not nines! You see that? He's cheating too, this cheating son of a bitch. He's cheating too! You heard him, you all heard him. Oh, and would you look at that! Ford and Fontaine have engaged in fisticuffs. These two are going at it, folks. Oh, they're rolling around all sweaty. <laughs> Imagine if they kissed. <laughs> nah, just, just kidding. Oh, classic Donkey Kong barrel throw from Ford. Oh, and Fontana shooting back with a Tarzan rope sweat. And folks, you cannot make this up. These two are swashbuckling on top of the balance beam. Fuck you! And ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to our 1980 World Championship of Gymnastics, Kyle Conroy. Well, in this shocking turn of events, it seems our last place contender, Kyle Conroy, has won the 1980s World Gymnastics Championship. By default. Boo! This is horse shit! What about Kenny Leahy? We're just gonna leave him there! It was a twist nobody saw coming. Conroy's slightly above average scores won him the title, simply because there was no one else left to give it to. They say history repeats itself. I hope to God it doesn't. Folks, it's Joe Radigan here with the 2020 World Gymnastics Championship. Now, folks, I hope you're ready. If it's anything like last time, you're in for the most electrifying event in human history. And would you just listen to that capacity crowd here at Fozzie Square Garden as we watch our competitors enter the stadium. kick off today's event, let me send you down to the field with the Commissioner of Gymnastics, M -M -M Marty Cudahy. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2020 World Championship of Gymnastics. And what an event it's going to be. We have some of the brightest stars in the world here today. And I can't wait for the action to start. But first, ladies and gentlemen, a moment of silence for the great Kenny Leahy who got lost in the foam pit. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. You know that Kenny Leahy, he was quite a young man, good looking man, and quite the gymnast. He was on his way, he really was. But we'll take a, a little tribute to Kenny. Right now, I'll direct your eyes toward the Jumbotron, please, as we pay this tribute to him, to his favorite song by Willie Nelson, Always, oh, excuse me, Always On My Mind. 
Forget it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't love you Quite as often as I could have Maybe I didn't treat you quite as good as I should have. If I made you feel second best, girl, I'm sorry I was blind. You were always on my mind. Last time Rocky Stegman was here, he had a nasty encounter with that trampoline. That almost cost him his life. Let's see if he'll get back on the horse or if he'll run home to his mama and eat a grilled cheese sandwich. Rocky, 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 Stegman. Rocky Stegman, Rocky, Rocky, Stegman. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. Rocky. Have the same routine you did in the 1980s World Championship. Yeah, that's correct. So the routine that almost killed you last time? Yeah, that's that's the one. Do you think it's going to kill you this time? No. <laughs> Look out for this one, folks. In walks Steve Fontana, a self-proclaimed health guru with a bit of a short temper. Not only is he handsome and rich, he actually has very nice hair. Is it true you weren't always that good at gymnastics? Yeah, I know. Hey, it's just uh. Can we just talk about the event, you know, just the event? I mean, that's Steve Fontana. You got to give it to him. He grew up in a tough neighborhood, Freeport, New York. I mean, if you can't execute a perfect back handspring by the time you're in around fourth grade, they're going to call you a... Can we say that on here? Yeah. They're going to call you a nitwit. I mean, it's messed up stuff to hear as a little kid, but it's true. What do you think about Jay Lotus, the mayor of your hometown, Freeport, New York, speaking about you in his latest campaign ad? He had some nice things to say about you. Mm. People of Freeport, Jim A here, Jay Lotus. Welcome to the voting official capital of the world as well as gymnastics. If you re-elect me, we're gonna keep Freeport beautiful as we are today. What's going on guys? It's Latinos for Lotus at, at gymnastics. We live on two things here in Freeport, Latinos and gymnastics. I got big plans for this city. Big, big plans! I was the king of this school! Right? Now I'm the big mock of Freeport. Oysters and athletes. That kid, Steve Fontana, is gonna be hands down the best gymnast we've ever seen before in our life. Freeport breeds some good here. He was a freak until he met me. I, Jay Lotus, made Steve Fontana, and he's gonna win this tonight. Jay Lotus, this November 3rd. Vote for me. How you doing? This is my city. Freeport! Back when I was in college researching veganism and nutrition at South Harmon Institute of Technology, I found out one thing. A young gymnast's diet should be consisted of three things. Tilapia, celery, and more tilapia. And Steve Fontana, he ate a lot of tilapia, I'll tell you. Word on the street is they used to call you terrible names like nitwit and other disgusting things. You know what? That's it! Fuck this and fuck you! Yeah, it wasn't until Steve Fontana reached high school where I found out that an all rhubarb diet would be more beneficial than uh, strictly tilapia. Can I have one of these? Thanks. Uh oh, folks. In walks Harold Ford. Now, let me tell you, I went clubbing with this guy. Not only is he a sexual deviant, but he's got a sweet tooth for cocaine. <laughs> it's a problem. Hey, we're here at Harry Ford's mansion on Long Island. We're lucky enough to catch up with Harry at his mansion and hopefully get an interview with him. Are you with the film crew? Yeah, Bubba. What's up? How we doing? I'm just practicing. All right, we'll move I'll see you in your gaze yeah, in the gazebo. All right. I'm almost done. 
What's going on? How you doing, brother? Pretty good. Yeah. It's been a long time coming, huh? Yeah, since 1980, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, where's your head at nowadays? You know, my head's at the same place it was in, in 1980. You know, I'm, everything is gymnastics in my life. I wake up in the morning, I brush my teeth, think about my next flip. Eat my waffles, flip. That's it, huh? Seems like you have like a really good work ethic now. It it, it really seems like uh, the media portrays you in a way that is not yourself. Yeah, the media is funny like that. They like to also they like to build this narrative around me that I'm some leopard print clad villain of gymnastics. Are you though? What do you mean? Were you a party animal? No. I'm not a party animal. A lot of people call me a party animal, but I'm not. I'm sure a lot of people call you a, a four-eyed, sleepy reporter. Is that Harry, true? Harry, what do you think about that video that's going viral about Stephen Fontana getting into his Ferrari, calling you a sex offender, and then riding off into the sunset? Like, how do you? Is that true, or what do you like? What do you feel? He called me that. Who? Tits Fontana. Hey, Steve. Steve Fontana, how's it going, man? How you doing? Big match coming up this week. How you preparing? You got any uh, special regiment going on or anything? What do you think about going up against Harry Ford? Harry Ford is a registered sex offender. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, I am a registered sex offender, but it was only because of my wardrobe malfunction at the 1980s games. Everyone saw that happen. You saw that happen. It was on TV. I couldn't control it. I, the thing opened up. My dick flopped out. Wee woo, newcomer alert. Here comes Eddie McQuaid. Now this natural athletic specimen has got those wily veterans shaking in their little boots. Not much is known about Eddie McQuaid, but some say he was raised by a mountain man in Minnesota. Yeah, you know, I raised Eddie McQuaid right here on my farm in Minnesota. He was just a boy when he came to live with us. Good boy he was. Yeah, hard worker. You know, I was the one that got him into gymnastics in the first place. Back in my day, I was good. Boy, oh boy, was I good. But McQuaid, that kid's got something special. Yeah. Man, man, oh man. Yeah. And would you look at this, the return of a king. Retired champion Kyle Conroy, the only living member of the 1980 games not returning to compete. He says, and I quote, no thank you. You know you don't deserve that medal. You won it by default. Everyone knows you. Shut the fuck up. First event, trampoline. Rocky Stegman attempting the same routine that nearly killed him all those years ago. Rocky Stegman approaches the trampoline. Stretching his arms seems rather unnecessary for a jumping-focused event. Folks, I am getting a report that Rocky Stegman is in fact dead. Condolences to the family. Folks, only three gymnasts left and the competition is neck and neck.
Fontana sticks the landing. Oh, and the hair is still intact. Dave Fontana, nitwit. Get up, you fucking pussy! <laughs> <laughs>
anything like this. Kyle Conroy, fork it over. Give it up. It's my medal. It's my, it's my medal. Get up. I don't know how Kenny Lai survived so long in the pit. What did he eat? I hope he had some snacks. Ford and Fontana are now tied with the lead, leaving it up to McQuaid to decide the victor. You okay with that? Yeah. Eddie McQuaid approaches. If he gets perfect tens across the board, which is n n nearly impossible, he may go home with the gold. Eddie McQuaid and God bless America. This is Joe Radigan signing off, heading back to my lonely and empty home. You know, I still got a lot of love for the sport of gymnastics. I had some surreal years playing it. I, you know, I just felt like it was the right time to hang them up for me and my family. Uh, uh, you know, I don't live in Freeport anymore, so gymnastics isn't mandatory. I'm over in East Atlantic Beach, you know, a little bit more quiet. I'm a few doors down from uh, Bob Guido, the professional golfer, so he's been giving me some pointers. Uh, yeah, it's great. I could finally drink alcohol again. <laughs> I, I got some respect for the guy. I, you know, we obviously had our ups and downs and all that. You know, I, I'm not going to let him talk to my kids or anything, but yeah. He, I do have some respect for it. Yeah, I mean, I, golfing, I've been sailing, and, uh, you know, I've been playing a lot of cornhole, and, uh, what was that? Pickleball, huh?
it get to you? 